Journey through the ancient empires continues as Egypt Old Kingdom rolls on, Memphis at 3340. And as we noticed in the last episode, we have a trial coming up soon. We have this assimilation quest that just recently begun. We've got a couple battles, the baboon people trying to pillage again, they'll fail, and we're subjugating them over here. And while all that's happening, we also want to begin growing. And we're beginning to see the you know, emerging complexity that can happen in the game. I want more housing. And we could still clear this out. And I'm not sure if this is the right call, but I'd like to go across the river. There is one hill place we could scout out here and probably will reveal some more scouting around it. So scouting, always hit and miss. But I am going to take the plunge and go that way. And Seth fires and fails, but now the shield is gone, and we don't have enough favor to put it back up yet, so hopefully Seth will stay on the sidelines for at least a couple turns while we can get that back in place. This is a very nice area. Okay, so our gods and the gods of the rabbit tribe exchanged knowledge, valuable knowledge on crafts and food production, so we got a boost to our assimilated clans and a boost to culture. That's a very nice event for us. And this is a great place for housing. A flat area, convenient for the construction of houses, boosts their effectiveness. So we're definitely going to grab that right away, clear out this thicket. But that's a couple of very nice benefits. So with that additional culture, again, we're aiming for the proto-writing here, which we can't get yet because we need opulent pottery, but that gives us enough to get the opulent pottery. Social stratification created demand for luxury items. Fine stone vessels, lavishly painted pottery were produced. Mastering glazing and Egyptian blue pigment gave birth to a rich tradition of Egyptian faience. And if Egyptian pottery at this point in time, mid, you know, 3300 BC, was not the most advanced in the world, it was certainly among the most advanced. So a big development to be sure additional division of labor, and we get plus 0.5 luxuries, and our workshops are better. So all of that heading our direction. And I think we're still waiting for these battles, basically, while we clear out this thicket. Okay, 63 to 11, 85%. Uh, they surprised us with the pillage raid, but we have the favor of Horus on our side. Yay. Well, the events didn't quite go our way. We lost a couple, but still overwhelming numbers get us the victory. And I don't see any purpose in exterminating at this point. Baboon tribe is now weak enough. That they can't provoke a serious threat. So we're going to go with the make friends with people option. Most generous Horus released the captive warriors, and our neighbors have appreciated this act. Still waiting to subjugate, but we can re-up with Seth now. And it looks like, yeah, they're defending their homeland, so they get a bonus, we get a bonus, but odds of... Better than 10 to 1 in numbers. Oh, they're ambushing us. Now, when that happens, you just lose a bunch of people at the start of the fight and you can't do anything about it. Which makes sense. It is an ambush, but... Grr. So even casualties with those. Could have gone a little better, but it's a very small amount. We're gaining that much military, like, in every couple turns right now, so... No big deal. We've subjugated them. Their chiefs have acknowledged the superiority of Horus. And the Baboon people have started to pay us tribute. Plus 100 clans assimilated, we will release their warriors again. So, our trial is going to begin soon. I'm just going to sort of hang out with you down here to wait for that. But we're now down to a little over half of the assimilation quest left. And the language barrier has been surmounted. Um, and this is a weird 
sort of repetitive thing, I think, because we already got multilingualism as a technology. The languages of our neighbors are more than just a jumble. We can understand each other, but regardless, you get 20% of the clans assimilated, you get a plus one culture. And you get 40%. So we are learning more and being more accepting of the different religious practices. And plus 0.5 favor. And here is our first trial. Cultural rejection. Leopard people, one of the most powerful tribes. They're proclaiming themselves champions of ancient tradition, uniting everybody else to get rid of us. Great. Minus 50% relations with them. They get a boost to their military as well. And assimilation of nearby people halted till the end of the trial. This is one of many reasons why you want to do these trials quickly. You're going to be graded not just on whether you pass it, but also your speed if you do pass it. So we have to do something before they unite everyone against us. Here's another negative consequence of the trial ongoing. Minus 3% relations to our neighbors every turn. And we have to lower this power of suspicion, get rid of all of the 10 of it, before the 10 turns of the trial expire. We can do that the standard way by convincing them by giving them food or bribing them by giving them production. Let's take a look at these leopard people. Yes, we know they're hostile. Thank you. So 5% relations. That's pretty cruddy. And you can see their military is significant. Not as high as ours, but it's significant compared to the other tribes in the area. And there are other options other than doing the convince and bribe option. We can conquer them by amassing a large army, as we will, in fact, do. Subjugate or annex the traditionalists. And then befriend... I don't even know how this is even possible. Try to make friends with them and peacefully incorporate. It says this is the hardest, but... I mean, I would go beyond that. Not all primitive societies eagerly accept alien culture and technologies. Yeah, modern ones don't necessarily either. So they're set in their ways. They're not willing to accommodate. All right. So we are going to put you over here. But if we tried the improved relations option, it says point plus point eight percent relations every turn. That wouldn't get us far enough to do anything within the... 10 turn limit. So how is Befriend even possible on these? I don't know. But regardless, we're going to go Subjugate. We have a significant advantage in numbers that will be generally increasing. So we should be able to survive that battle without too much trouble, assuming we don't get ambushed again at the beginning or something. Continuing to work here. And onward we go. There's our Thicket. And our Seth shield is down to one now. So we're just going to hold on to the rest of our favor and try to get that back up before it expires. I do want to get the house up here right away, though. Let's claim this area and get all of that moving forward. A few more turns on that. And our patron, Patazba Stodar Krasum craftsmen with talents required to create goods we can use to bribe the chiefs. Well, we're not going to bribe them, so we're just going to pocket that extra production and say thank you very much. Add a bit to our stockpile. Hurry up. Well, I can't really hurry beyond going to attack them immediately, so just chill. And they want to attack us. This will actually help us as they're trying to attack at our houses area, because it limits the amount of army, of course, they can use over here to defend. And it's a bit random whether this battle happens first or this one, but it does, since they're going to happen on the same turn, it doesn't really matter. We're going to handle it in either case. So I don't think I want to be hanging over here with the houses, but what should I do with my workers at this point? I'd like to go after more food. Or possibly build a cemetery. I think I'm going to go the food route. Is there any good... Well, this is a good area to scout. Let's take a turn and do that. And then meanwhile, we can grab the proto-writing. So the first hieroglyphs, names on primitive funerary stelae, before appearing next on pottery labels. Contain names, ownership markings, description of goods... And we're used to denote not only whole words, but specific sounds. So this is a later development somewhat than cuneiform in Mesopotamia, but nonetheless developing ways to write down you know, 
primitive sorts of language. Definitely a huge event in all cultures. And our culture bonus has increased. Ooh. Very nice. And we're getting more gifts here. But also we have a hilltop area, but there are savages here. And we can potentially invite them to join the tribe, which we definitely want to do. Chance to join 50% of return. And these ancestral duty things are somewhat annoying because they're somewhat random in when they appear. And it's basically a tax on your favor increase. So another generation of ancestor rulers have departed for the land of the dead. It's our duty to honor and sustain them so they would help the living in return. We shouldn't forget our own ancestors as well as the forefather gods. In other words, always be worshipping every ancestor you know about. Okay. But yes, we'll be able to get another worker fairly quickly through this. And I think... I think I want to hang on a little bit longer to our current favor. Okay. So we definitely have an advantage somewhere around 3 to 1. They're defending their homeland in favor of Horus. It started off as a decent confrontation for us, which means, oh, they were going to flank us now. But we're going to take losses here. So overall, that didn't go that well. We only took about a third of their losses, though. Definitely happy with that. And the military investment we've done definitely paying off. So they're paying us tribute. Another 100 clans assimilated. Once again, we will release. And most importantly, the trial is over. We have taught them that cultural rejection will not work against our force of arms. Yeah, reached an agreement with our spiritual adversaries at the end of a Kopesh. So, plus 50% to our relations with the Leopard Tribe. And yes, the Kopesh wasn't used this early. Just a figure of speech. Um, plus 90 culture. And gold victory. If we had waited one additional turn, then we would have only gotten a silver victory out of this. Not as big of a bonus here in the culture. And also fewer points at the end of the game, if that's something that's of concern to you. And they disbanded the other attacks. We don't even have to deal with it. Alright, so we're getting now about one food unit and a tiny bit of production from their tribute as well. And we have more places that we can scout for potential land. This is a hilly area, I believe. This could potentially be a good farmland area. Let's go ahead and check that out. We do have a small food bonus at the moment. I'd like to get back here and build a cemetery, but I think it's a little bit premature, probably. Let's go ahead and... Nothing has happened with Seth yet, so we're going to re-up with Horus. And, you know, of course, plenty of room now with our housing. Let's see what's going on here. So, our next boost for culture is chiefdom. And we could grab that with the bonus culture we just got, but this is going to occasion a bunch of changes in our society, which it doesn't really particularly tell you, but it will. So I want to sort of gather up some of these loose ones in the background first, the cheaper ones. We're going to go with pig breeding first. And we actually have enough to afford another one, so we'll also grab tombs. So pig breeding... Uh, people of the Nile Delta learned how to breed pigs in pre-dynastic times. Later passed that on to settlers from Upper Egypt. Pork was consumed for the average person, but not used in religious ceremonies. And half of a unit of food additional, along with the bonus to pastures. So that will improve our growth. And then the tombs. Uh, first buried their dead in sandy pits. Later, prominent people were buried in brick-lined graves. Mud brick walls were used. A structure of wooden reed built over the grave. So we have additional development and complexity in the funerary rituals. 0.5 favor every turn, very useful, and 0.3 favor from cemeteries. So that's an additional encouragement for us to get that cemetery up sooner rather than later. 
And I think... Yeah, we're just really trying to focus on getting more workers now. And if you would please get me the savages, that'd be nice. You did. Crocodiles have migrated to where? I don't know. Okay, you hit 60% of clans assimilated. You get... It varies slightly, but a small bonus to culture. We're exchanging knowledge. And now we have new customs and traditions as well. An additional 0.5 to favor. So those things are encouragement for you to keep going with the cultural assimilation. Now, we have extinction of large animals. Climate's becoming more arid. Savannas dry out. Herbivores and predators are leaving for the south. Nile floods are quite violent. So basically, food is harder to come by. We do have an additional worker now. Where the crocodiles migrate to, we don't know. Okay, cool. We probably can't see it. Probably somewhere else on the river. Got our savages. And we could use this area potentially for another workshop at some point. So we have a couple of hill areas now available. But I like this area down here. I'm just going to get another grain field going here. Boost our food supply. Now we're at 59 there, and these are neutral. I'm just thinking of ways to potentially... Because we could get this in three turns if we do the improved relations. It cost us some luxuries, but we can afford it. I think three turns is probably worth expending. Let's, let's finish up this quest. And then also... Hmm. I am going to... See, how much more do we need? We need 13. Probably, if I just hang out here in two turns, can we, are we going to produce anything if we... See, I can build the cemetery and still get that food in. I think I'm going to do that. We're going to get the cemetery up, and we're also going to work on getting that next worker. Starting to see some growth here. A second field going up. I want more. But I like the direction that we're heading in at the moment. So, onwards. Whole lot of nothing there. Cemetery and grain fields. Big turn for us. And Seth fired. But it shouldn't be too long. Our next one is 18. Yeah, we should be able to get that the next turn. And Seth, I don't think I've ever seen Seth fire two turns in a row. We usually have a bit of a grace period. We should be good there. So what are we going to have for our technology now? Our options are irrigation and multiple souls. And while additional favor would be nice, I definitely want the food here as we're building more fields. So let's grab irrigation. Creation of unified irrigation systems requiring organizing labor of thousands of people under the rule of a powerful leader. At the start of the inundation or flood, floodgates are opened through a system of channels. So we're doing massive dig ditching and canals. Flow it onto the fields and dams keeping it in place. And after a few months, excess water was drained, keeping everything very fertile and increasing the yield of even one of the most profitable agricultural areas in the world. So, plus 0.2 to our grain and flax fields. And we're at 1.8 instead of 1.6 on these. And now, once you get irrigation, you can really see, I mean, fishing is, it's kind of a sad partner, unless there's some special bonus on the river. It's a sad partner to what you're trying to do along the sides of the banks. So we're going to add another worker. We've got our cemetery up. And by the way, notice the Bonus here was plus one, now it's plus 3.5. Cemeteries don't give you a 2.5, they only give you a plus one in terms of the culture. And it doesn't really, the math doesn't work out for the spirit of Thoth bonus. Now clearly something's going on with that bonus interacting here, but it's definitely bugged. So it's just kind of, it's kind of a weird thing because there is a spirit of Thoth tile in every game. So it's kind of a strange thing that that never got fixed in my opinion, but it is what it is. Uh, we could check out this hill area. This is a river area, I think. 
I mean, we don't have that many areas to continue scouting, but I think I'm going to, instead of that, let's just come down here, keep working on more food. Let's get another grain filled up. Let's really leverage that whole idea, and then we'll start scouting a bit more pretty soon. And our assimilation quest is complete. We've created a unified Gazan culture. Now our peoples, though they look differently, see all of Egypt as a single creation of the gods. So, a larger unified society, another plus 50 culture. Which is, again, another reason why it's worth accelerating your way through the quests and trials, if you can, because you get those rewards for it. Now, we have a new quest. Our tribe is now unified we must ascend the god Ptah, patron of our lands is benevolent our settlement prospers we should thank our god by building a large temple it will guarantee his protection in the future and we will get a one-time bonus of plus 10 favor if we achieve this and it tells us we must discover the concept of multiple souls technology which we don't quite have build a temple on any vacant hills they require lots of resources, but they provide us with some otherworldly support. All successes and misfortune were attributed by the ancient Egyptians to the acts of supernatural forces. They had a complicated relationship with their god, which was quid pro quo. They exchanged sacrifices for divine patronage. And this is not, of course, unique to Egypt, Egyptian religion, something you see commonly in various places. They thought the gods required assistance from humans as well, just like how humans need divine protection. Temples are the houses of gods on earth. They're high walls, safely hiding priestly evocations from the evil eye. And of course, they also believed, particularly later, that your ru the rulers, the pharaohs and whatnot, would become gods after their death. And that really ties into why pyramids were built. We will get to all of that later. So, this quest is really significant. This is the one, and I'm just sort of spoiling this because it's important for the gameplay strategy. When we complete the temple, we will get access to the map of Egypt. However, the temple, as they mentioned, is not cheap. And I don't think we have anywhere that we could actually... Well, I don't think we can build over... Yeah, we could build over here right now. So I just want to show really quickly like if we were to pull this group out and we were to build here we were to go for that temple well we don't have the temple actually available first of all we've got to get the technology for it but then also it gives you plus three favor every turn but notice the cost four luxuries and 20 production every turn you don't have to have 80 saved up for that but you have to have close and we have 15 so we definitely got to expand that economy of ours and be concerned not just with population, but also with production to reach that stage. I mean, obviously, we're definitely going to need additional workshop in order to make that happen. There's a lot of work to do, but it's a very important quest to complete. So we'll be heading into that, but I need to increase our population first before it's reasonable to do that. And as far as the research itself goes, that's next. Concept of multiple souls. So Egyptians believed humans had multiple souls, among them Ka and Ba. Ka described as a human life force. Ba is associated with an individual's personality. So their religion has multiple personality disorders. It's kind of an interesting, interesting idea, but it's definitely much different from a lot of other traditional religions that developed in terms of the multiple souls. Death is seen as the Ka leaving the body. Without both, the deceased would suffer oblivion, or a second death. Regular food would not only keep the living alive, but could also bring the Ka back to a corpse, or a depiction of the deceased. And the Ba left for the heavens, but returned to a statue of the deceased during sacrificial rituals. So, again, this belief is tied into you know why we have all of these items, food and pottery and whatnot, piled up by the deceased corpse and... Again, the beginning of more and more advanced rituals relating to death. And plus one culture every turn, or favor, excuse me, and we do unlock the temple. 
So, let's get back our Seth shield, if we can. And now we have our path forward pretty much set up for us. We're going to be getting the whole chiefdoms advance pretty soon. That's really going to help us boost forward to our goal of getting the ascension and the temple. And we have much work to be done to really unify Memphis, but we're getting close to it. So we'll be coming all to that in the next episode. But before we get there, I'm going to be switching back to China for some additional developments. Egypt Old Kingdom will return, though. Thanks for watching.